गुड इवनिंग एवरीबॉडी गुड इवनिंग सर वेलकम सर गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग गुड इवनिंग सर गुड इवनिंग सर Good evening, Mr. Sadrat. Good evening. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So the program is at six o'clock. No, not six thirty. Yeah, yeah, six. Good evening, Dr. Sadrat. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Pandey, and uh, good evening, Dr. Mitra. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, Professor Lahiri. Good to see you. professor pande good yes. evening good evening uh, sir negi sir will join i think negi sir will... he is he is joining okay okay i have confirmed from him he is joining okay
Professor Ghosh, should I uh, start the program and say two minutes time? I think it's round six three. Uh, participants are joining us. Our dignitaries have already joined us. Right then, should I begin? Professor Pandey, shall we wait for Professor Negi or? Shall yes, start? he is joining actually. Okay. Actually, uh, join, sir. Yes. Oh, join, okay. join. that's great. <laughs> join, Oscar. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Good evening. <laughs> we are waiting for you. So we may Can start. Some problem was there. No. Okay, okay. Okay. So with the permission of uh, both the vice chancellors, uh, may I request <laughs> Dr. Mathu to start the proceedings. Thank you so much, sir. So it's an honor to welcome all the dignitaries and the scholars and other professionals who have joined us in this one week national level online faculty development program. It's on strategies for developing outcome-based curriculum and utilizing digital tools in education. Uh, this FDP has been organized by Netaji Subhash Open Universities in uh, Institutions Innovation Council, IIC, and it is done in collaboration with Uttarakhand Open University. So I welcome you all to this inaugural session. And uh, uh, let me start by first asking Professor Onirvan Ghosh, who is also the chairperson of our FDP organizing committee. Uh, he is a professor of commerce and also the director of SICA uh, in NSOU. So over to Professor Ghosh for the inaugural address. Thank you, Professor Mathur. Good evening to everyone. Uh, it is my Privilege to welcome all the dignitaries who have joined online from different locations. Today's chief guest, Dr. Basir Ahmed Sadraj, Director, Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia. The vice chancellors of both the host university, Professor O. P. Negi, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Uttarakhand Open University, and Professor Indrajit Lahiri, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Nitai Shuvas Open University, Kolkata. My esteemed colleagues at Netaji Shubhas Open University and also my counterpart from the Uttarakhand Open University. I would also li like to invite my dear participants who have joined this online FDP from different parts of the country. We are very happy to welcome all of you because this is our maiden venture under the academic collaboration of two open universities to organize this one-week faculty development program. As you know, both the universities have been established by the respective state act. And both the universities offer not only the degree programs, but also conduct capacity building programs for teachers to keep them relevant in the ever-changing education system. I may mention especially after introduction of National Education Policy 2020 and the integration of ICT in the pedagogy after pandemic. So both the events are very important in education sector. Through NEP, that is National Education Policy 2020, we have to design, we have to prepare the course content in such a way that all should have the specific learning objectives and learning outcomes. Because learning outcomes are the one of the key 
determinants of the success of the future workforce. So the course content of this particular faculty development program has been designed to address various aspects of NEP 2020. How do you prepare the program objectives or program outcomes? As well as we have tried to include the topic, how do you utilize the digital tools in the course delivery mechanism? Uh, we always remember and acknowledge the relationship with our esteemed partners like SEMCA and Uttarakhand Open University. Here I may quote Henry Ford, coming together is a beginning, keeping together is a progress, working together is a success. And we are grateful to the Commonwealth Educational Media Center for Asia for their support in various skill development projects since 2014. And we are also looking forward to, the, to our next project, which will definitely strengthen our relationship in days to come. We are also thankful to the authority of the Uttarakhand Open University for their support in the present faculty development program. We, we, we are overwhelmed to receive the responses from the faculties from across the country who have shown their interest in the online program. I hope you will have a good learning experience towards the end of the one week long faculty development program. And there are, will be some activities. After successful completion of the activities, the participants will get the completion certificate. With these words, I again welcome all of you to participate in this very important one week online faculty development program. And through this FDP, we will also learn how to conduct the online programs. And uh, on the basis of your feedback, we will improve the course content as well. So thank you again to all the participants and all the dignitaries. Thank you. Over to Professor Mathu. Thank you, Professor Ghosh, uh, for your inaugural address. It was definitely benefited the <laughs> participants. They have come to know in a short manner how this FDP will benefit them because learning outcomes and objectives are definitely very important. Uh, now, I would like to go over to Professor Jitendra Pandey to introduce the theme and the modalities of the FDP. Uh, Professor Pandey is also uh, a chairperson of uh, the FDP organizing committee. And uh, he, he has helped us throughout uh, to organize this program as well as uh, uh, the Uttarakhand Open Uni uh, University LMS has been uh, in his control and he uh, and we welcome him also to the FDP and sir we would like to hear from you the theme of the program. Honorable Vice Chancellors, Professor Indrajit Lahiri of NSOU and Professor O.P.S. Negi of Uttarakhand Open University. Our distinguished chief guest, Dr. B. Sadraj, esteemed colleagues, respected resource persons, and dear participants, a very warm welcome to all of you. I would like to start by extending my heartfelt thanks to the leadership of Netaji Subhash Open University Am I audible? Yeah, I yeah. Please, okay. please continue. A very warm welcome to all of you. I would like to stand, uh, I'll start by extending my heartfelt thanks to the leadership of NSOU and Uttarakhand Open University for their guidance and support in bringing this collaborative faculty development program to life. The theme of this FDP, strategies for developing outcome-based curriculum and utilizing digital tools in education, is crucial for today's educational landscape. We are moving towards a learner-centric outcome-oriented model where outcome-based education guides us to set clear objectives, align our teaching strategies, and measure student progress effectively. This program will equip us with practical strategies to create impactful outcome-driven curriculums that not only meet educational standards, 
but also prepare students with the skills they need for the future. Additionally, the program focuses on harnessing digital tools to enhance the teaching learning experience. By introducing platforms such as interactive whiteboards, virtual classrooms, collaborative apps, this FDP will empower you with the skills to make your classroom more engaging and accessible. For your convenience, all recorded lectures will be made available on our learning management system. Each registered participant will receive login credential and the link to access the LMS, where you can find the schedule and resources of each session. Certificates of participation will be provided to all the participants who meet the course completion requirements. To complete the program, you will need to attempt quizzes on the LMS after each module, which helps reinforce key concepts from each session. Once these requirements are fulfilled, you will be able to download your certificate directly from the LMS. I encourage everyone to make the most of this opportunity, engage actively and explore how we can collectively advance our learning methods to benefit our students. Let us look forward to an enriching collaborative journey together. Thank you and best wishes for a successful and inspiring week. Thank you so much, Professor Pandey. I think you have already answered a lot of questions which are uh, in the minds of the participants. So uh, they can easily go to the LMS and all the material will be available to them then. Of course, we are always there to help them so they can always mail us in that regard. I would now like to uh, uh, our, uh, ask our Honorable Vice Chancellor of uh, Netaji Subhash Open University, Professor Indrajit Lahiri to address the gathering uh, sir, it's an honor that you could join us and thank you for all your encouragement. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed colleagues and distinguished guests, it is both an honor and a privilege to stand before you today at the inaugural program dedicated to the critical themes of developing outcome-based curricula and leveraging digital tools in education. As we gather here, we embark on a journey to transform our educational practices, enhancing the quality and relevance of our teaching and learning processes. In today's rapidly evolving world, traditional education paradigms are no longer sufficient. The need for an outcome-based curriculum is more pressing than ever. This approach focuses on what students should learn and emphasizes how they can apply their knowledge and skills in real-world contexts. By aligning our educational outcomes with the needs of society and the demands of the workforce, we can ensure that our students are not just passive recipients of information, but active participants in their learning journey. Moreover, we are in the midst of a digital revolution that is reshaping every aspect of our lives, including education. The integration of digital tools offers as unparalleled opportunities to enhance engagement, foster collaboration, and personalize learning experiences. By harnessing technology, we can create dynamic and interactive learning environments that cater to the diverse needs of our students. We must equip ourselves with the knowledge and skills to effectively utilize these tools, ensuring that they serve as a means to enrich the educational experience rather than detract from it. Throughout this program, we will explore innovative strategies and best practices for designing 
and implementing outcome-based curriculum. We'll delve into case studies and engage in hands-on workshops that will empower us to integrate digital tools into our teaching methodologies. I encourage each of you to actively participate, share your insights, and collaborate with your peers as we seek to redefining, redefine our approach to education. As we move forward, let us remember that our ultimate goal is to foster a culture of continuous improvement and lifelong learning. We must adaptable, open to new ideas, and committed to our students' success. Together, we can create an educational ecosystem that not only meets today's challenges, but also anticipates tomorrow's needs. I sincerely thank Professor OPS Nagy, Honorable Vice Chancellor of the Uttarakhand Open University for collaborating with the Netaji Shubhash Open University to organize the faculty development program. Today's event is the starting point of the joint academic journey of UOU and NSOU. I also thank Dr. B. Sadraj, Honorable Director of SEMCA for being with us on this auspicious day of the joint venture of UOU and NSOU. Dr. Sadraj always encourages and supports the different academic endeavors of NSU as a friend and guide. I appreciate the organizers' dedication to this vital work and let us make this program a remarkable success. Thank you and Namaskar. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for your enlightening address. Uh, we would now like to move on to our next program, which is uh, the address by our chief guest, the Honorable Director Semka B. Shadraj, sir. Uh, uh, sir, he joined Semka actually in uh, June 2022, uh, but prior to his work in uh, Commonwealth of Learning, he has managed ICT, 4D, and skill development programs in over 40 countries around the world. Uh, he has been working for organizations such as International Development Research Center Canada, One World International UK, Transparency International Germany, and the British Council of India. Dr. Shadraj earned his PhD in Information Science from Logborough University, UK. We welcome you, sir. It's indeed an honor to have you as a chief guest on this FDP program. Uh, so over to you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me to join this uh, very important effort, uh, a groundbreaking effort. Uh, for the first time, um, probably, you know, at, in, in my knowledge, uh, two open universities have come together to uh, launch an online-based capacity building program for faculty members. Perhaps uh, such collaborations happened in the past, but um, I see this as a, a very good venture in terms of two OUs coming together, uh, initiating this process. I only hope that uh, this would uh, be emulated by other open universities uh, and I see that uh, both NSOU and uh, UOU are champions of uh, collaboration and partnerships. I'm sure uh, um, this would uh, be extended to other open universities and other geographies as well. Having said that, uh, I would like to thank uh, dear Professor Indrajit Lagari, the Vice Chancellor of Netaji Subhash Open University, and dear Professor OPS Negi, Vice Chancellor of Uttarakhand Open University for uh, inviting me to join this uh, effort as uh, one of your speakers in the inaugural session. This uh, effort would not have been possible uh, unless uh, uh, our dear Professor Jitendra Pandey and uh, Professor Anirban Ghosh not put together such a, an interesting interwoven partnership between UOU and NSOU. Um, you know, these two professors have been very innovative in bringing uh, uh, 
like-minded individuals together in terms of co-learning and uh, knowledge sharing. Thank you, dear Professor Vithumathur Mitra and uh, Professor Ashutosh Bhatt uh, for uh, coordinating this important effort. Uh, I think uh, you are setting a new yardstick, uh, a kind of a milestone, which would uh, set uh, a kind of a good benchmark for uh, not only uh, UOU and uh, NSOU to measure the success, but also stand as an exemplar for, as I mentioned, other universities to emulate. I wish to thank all the participants uh, who are likely to be very busy uh, over the period of uh, one week, uh, actually spending their valuable evenings, uh, 7 to 9 p.m., and today uh, an extra one hour in this inaugural session for being together. And this is phenomenal. I, I think uh, you know quite a few of us uh, would like to do many other things uh, in the evenings, but uh, uh, somehow I see that... Uh, uh, close to 60, 70 people who have joined us today have, uh, uh, you know, decided to dedicate uh, their time in uh, coming together and co-learning uh, uh, on an important topic, which is uh, strategies for developing outcome-based curriculum and utilizing digital tools in education, which is a very important topic. And uh, it is also nice to see that one of the most powerful digital tools since the pandemic, at least I would say, Zoom is being used to uh, carry out uh, this entire week-long session fully online. So this is a great testament to the use of uh, the use and the utilization of digital tools for developing educational strategies. So well done, colleagues. Uh, and uh, I would like to mention all those who are involved in this uh, uh, organizing this effort, uh, including the um, a good battery of uh, you know trainers who you seem to have attracted from Stride Igno from uh, NEPA, the two professors from NEPA from IIT Kadakpur and uh, um, from St. Xavier's Kolkata and uh, our own Dr. Papiya Upadhyaya who would uh, join you as resource people, resource persons to basically take uh, uh, everyone through a, a quite a good journey. I wish I had the time to join each and every day to learn, uh, um, you know, something really new. But unfortunately, you know, as uh, time would have it, uh, you know, uh, I, I won't be able to join. But uh, today, with this opportunity, I would like to not only congratulate you, but also mention how significant it is that uh, you are carrying out this program at a time when uh, we are looking to basically combining skills and competencies necessary for our learners to thrive in the 21st century marketplace. Um, it is only possible with the innovative approaches of this kind. And when it comes to OBE, the outcome-based education, I think uh, it's, it's a greater methodology for one to um, transform the educational landscape as mentioned by uh, Professor Jitendra Pandey. Also, the significance of OBE is uh, quite outlined in the National Education Policy 2020, where it provides a very detailed framework for transforming Indian education through uh, pedagogical approaches such as the OBE. So uh, congratulations again for uh, bringing it at a, a very timely effort, as a very timely effort in uh, uh, getting the faculty members and the non-faculty members as well to understand uh, uh, what is OBE and how digital tools could be employed in terms of achieving outcome-based education. Now, I mentioned about NEP 2020, and NEP 2020 sees OBE not as a methodology, mere methodology or a pedagogical issue, but as a philosophy. And if you look at NEP 2020, it flips the coin. And where uh, the philosophy is placed uh, uh, squarely on the learners. Learners are the at the center of gaining the education experience that uh, uh, one deserves. So it's uh, very important for us to understand that OBE, outcome-based education, is uh, uh, supportive of NEP in terms of uh, translating its philosophy of uh, placing learners at the center of learning and also gaining education experience. Experience is an important word here 
so uh, OEB, OBE is a methodology for us to achieve it, achieving it. But uh, NEP 2020 also sees OBE to achieve the much desired holistic and multidisciplinary approach to education. Now, on one hand, NEP flips the coin by putting learners at the center, not uh, content at, or the knowledge at the center. But uh, NEP also talks about uh, or emphasizes upon the um, holistic development, holistic and interdisciplinary approach to education uh, in terms of enabling learners to develop their intellectual, aesthetic, social, physical, emotional, and moral capabilities. So this is very interesting and important because uh, until for a long time, maybe 200 years, we produced good uh, engineers, good uh, chemists, good uh, physicians, or good botanists. Uh, we never thought that uh, in the higher education uh, you know, arena, we would be developing individuals with intellectual, aesthetic, social, physical, emotional, and moral capabilities. So this is on and above the knowledge. That's why you know NEP is groundbreaking, where it flips the coin from content and knowledge-centered approach to more learner-centered approach. So the learner is expected to be intellectually capable, aesthetic, socially relevant, and uh, oriented, um, emotionally connected, and uh, one with moral capabilities. So that's something that uh, we want to think through when it comes to OBE. So OBE therefore calls for an interdisciplinary approach. So it's not just uh, scientists becoming, you know, uh, just studying science or humanists just exactly. studying humanities, but uh, we are calling for an interdisciplinary approach and thinking in our education system, where we can combine humanities, arts, social sciences, STEM education, vocational subject, all this to foster communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and problem solving. So, you know, quite a few things are loaded here. On one hand, we say NEP flips the coin, places the learner at the center. We also say NEP wants uh, to give importance to that individual would be morally, ethically, emotionally, physically, uh, in all sense, would be um, uh, somebody very significant who would become a lifelong learner, but also a global citizen. But we are also talking about, uh, in terms of uh, equipping this individual, we want, we want to see that this individual is uh, interdisciplinary in thinking, where uh, uh, a person combines uh, uh, several streams of learning uh, where he or she is able to apply communication, collaboration, creativity, critical thinking, and problem solving as uh, the mantra. So you're talking about soft skills. You're talking about 21st century skills. We are talking about subject-specific skills, but learned in an interdisciplinary manner so that uh, you know a person who comes out of our tertiary system is very well-rounded equipped to deal with the challenges that emerge in the 21st century, including upkeeping of the value system, ethical conduct, and social engagement and environmental consciousness. So all these things are very important because, uh, you know, as we speak uh, today, uh, COP29 has uh, kicked off at Baku, and all the countries are coming together to understand how they can deal with uh, this phenomenon called climate change, and uh, in, in the recent past, uh, we have uh, um, witnessed uh, many companies, uh, many uh, industries and marketplaces having uh, to take up what they call ESG uh, very seriously. So environmental, social, and governance systems very seriously. And even if you look at the SDG 17 goals, unlike the MDG goals, SDGs have combined all the three, social, economical, and environmental why they, what they call the triple bottom line. So today's individual is not good enough if uh, he or she is a doctor or an engineer, but uh, if that same person is able to upkeep the value system, ethical conduct, social engagement, and environmental consciousness, you know, that person is going to be much more valuable to society rather than being a mere somebody. 
So that's where OBE is uh, really placed. So the core elements of OBE, outcome-based education, as we uh, discuss the next five days, are going to be very, very interesting and important for you. And I would like to basically outline a couple of things for you to consider. I'm sure that uh, the very learned uh, uh, faculty members uh, from uh, IGNO, NEPA, um, and from Calcutta, from NSOU itself, uh, all of them are going to deal with all these all these issues. But I'd like to outline some of the issues that you may like to pay some attention to. First, I think uh, after the five days of uh, the deliberations, if each and every uh, participant in this FDP would be clear about the definition of learning outcomes, that itself is a good, uh, a major success for your program. I think we discussed a range of outcomes in you know uh, just in the last uh, two three minutes when I was explaining about uh, NEP and uh, OBE. Uh, we already discussed uh, uh, numerous outcomes, uh, like interdisciplinary approach to learning, gaining 21st century skills, becoming global citizens with ethical and moral moorings. Um, here is where I think uh, the educators are facing the challenge. Now, we need to really keeping all this in mind, we need to define what uh, the learning outcomes are we going to pursue. What do we want our learners to learn? Do we want our learners to learn history or do we want our learners to learn geography or political science or management or do we want our learners to also learn all these uh, outcomes that we talked about? So that's something that uh, very important for us to keep in mind because it is the knowledge from our teaching or the skills that they hone and the competencies that they gain or even the value system they imbibe these are the ones that are going to make the difference. So I think we need to focus on uh, the definition of our learning outcomes, be it our programs or courses or micro-credentials. We need to really define it from an OBE lens. So if that is done, off of the job of uh, the idea of OBE is done. Now, once we define the learning outcomes from an OBE, OBE point of view, in our own context, I think we'll have to pay some attention to the curriculum that we handle. We would not only introspect if the curriculum is aligned to the goal that meets on, on its own definition of OBE, but the question that would arise is that uh, whether my curriculum is flexible, whether it is multidisciplinary, whether it is holistic, whether it's interdisciplinary, uh, whether my curriculum would help the learner to prepare herself or himself for the future of the world of work and uh, to deal with the complexity of the modern world that we live in. So that's something that we need to think about. After defining the uh, outcomes uh, from an OBE lens, we need to pay some attention to the curriculum to really introspect whether the curriculum is aligned to the goals. Once uh, we know how to handle our curriculum that uh, you know we introspect, then we would be able to determine if and how we can in, you know, uh, introduce innovation in our teaching and learning processes. That's where the uh, pedagogy comes into place. Um, are we incorporating various techniques, whether it's project-based, activity-based, problem-based, action-oriented, um, flexible learning approaches in the real world setting? Or are we continuing with a kind of a theatrical style of delivering talks to our students where they simply imbibe uh, um, transact knowledge from one end to another or are they also able to um, really live through what uh, the Bloom taxonomy talks about and in all this are we also looking at blended approaches uh, which are very different from uh, the typical face-to-face -face education that we normally import uh, through our learning centers uh, uh, what they, the the local resource centers and uh, contact programs. So it's important for us to look at our pedagogical approaches and bring in the new innovations that have come into play. So once uh, we do this, we should also look at uh, from an OBE point of view, how we can take a look at our assessment from a, a new lens, from an OBE lens, be it continuous or summative or formative or diagnostic, 
we need to really think through the assessment process. This is where I think uh, a variety of uh, digital tools that are at play, which uh, I think uh, many of our colleagues would be highlighting, uh, would uh, provide you a variety of assessment uh, techniques in a variety of ways, be it instant feedback or analytical feedback uh, through the use of AI tools or even the dashboards of our LMSs that allow us to um, learn uh, you know, a thousand things about our learners and their learning behavior. So all these are important in our OBE. Uh, so from uh, the faculty members' point of view, you know, after defining our learning outcomes from an OBE lens, uh, looking at the curriculum and introspecting the curriculum, whether it is uh, holistic and interdisciplinary enough, uh, looking at the innovation, innovative practices of teaching and learning where we can bring in innovation in pedagogy, we also have an opportunity to, from an OBE lens, look at the assessment. But once we carry out, it's not enough. OBE, is, uh, OBE can be successful only when we learn to focus on student support and their wellness, be it academic advice or administrative advice from time to time. Um, in our university system, we need to really keep in touch with the learners in a manner that uh, we know them very well. Even if they, we know we don't know them enough through the application of digital tools and uh, uh, in, including AI tools, we could learn about our learners in a much more uh, intentive, intuitive manner so that we can bring out uh, personalized learning experiences for them so that the outcome-based education for, uh, uh, for everyone need not be a kind of an industrial production of uh, the same type of graduates coming out of your schools or uh, learners uh, with uh, the same type of skills uh, in a, a mass production manner. But uh, you know, through the application of use of digital tools, you could uh, also make the OBE very, very distinct for individual learners so that uh, they are able to excel. So student support and their wellness is extremely important. Uh, Wellness is something that we have not really paid much attention to, but after COVID, we all recognize that uh, student wellness is extremely important and the success of uh, students in uh, uh, from accessing our you know, programs and courses to succeeding and completing and also excelling in their life is uh, largely dependent on the student support that we offer, be it career counseling or placements, or various support systems that we offer them throughout their studies. So it's important for us to focus on the diverse needs of our students. And this is also another element that we need to focus on, where sometimes we uh, only feed to the very able students. We need to keep in mind that uh, there are people, uh, learners with specific learning disabilities, uh, learners with a variety of uh, other disabilities who come and join us, who prefer open and distance learning as a natural choice. So we need to ensure that uh, our student support systems strive to overcome all barriers leading to their success. That is going to be the best testament to OBE um, if we did that very well. But in all this, what happens is capacity development of our faculty and non-faculty members are often ignored and they fall between the stools. In higher education systems, both the administrative and academic leadership should recognize the need for continuous professional development that fosters a culture of innovation and pedagogical excellence in which teachers end up being facilitators who create, uh, who develop uh, well-rounded future citizens who would actually lead the world. If you look at uh, the Indian society, every sixth person in the world would be an Indian. Uh, and uh, it is also mentioned in Australia, the in, uh, uh, India-Australia Education Forum, in the presence of our education minister, somebody mentioned that every fourth uh, uh, person who would receive a tertiary degree would be from India, which means we are contributing to the global citizenry in a very effective manner. So this is where we need to pay a lot of attention to our faculty members and non-faculty members in their capacity building programs. So in conclusion, 
uh, recognizing all this, I would like to congratulate both Professor Lagri and Professor Negi for doing just that, becoming the champions of OBE in their respective universities by encouraging their faculty members to gain newer skills through programs of this kind in a collaborative manner, using digital techniques at their aid to uh, doing this in a very cost-effective sense. So my congratulations once again to everyone involved in this effort. But before I close, I wanted to also mention a sentence, a long sentence, which uh, the chat GPT produced for me. I simply asked the chat GPT, chat GPT as to what I should speak today in this uh, inaugural session. And it, it said, which uh, I read out to you now, NEP 2020's components are intrinsically linked to the principles of outcome-based education by focusing on holistic development, institutional restructuring, quality, autonomy, research, innovation, equity, inclusion, regulatory reforms, vocational education, teacher education, student support, and internationalization. The policy aims to create a robust education framework that ensures students to achieve their specific measurable learning outcomes. This alignment with OBE principles would ensure that the educational systems not only impart knowledge, but also prepare students for real world challenges and opportunities. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. In your short lecture, uh, in such a pithy and succinct manner, sir, you have put across the significance of OBE, uh, the curriculum, uh, the importance of the ethical practices. And thank you so much for your kind words, sir, for encouraging us. Uh, we will definitely try to live up to all that you expect from us. So thank you very much, sir. And it is, was an honor to have you as a chief guest. Uh, I, it is now my privilege to uh, welcome uh, Professor, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Professor Opi Negi of Uttarakhand Open University, sir. Uh, we are looking forward to your address. Over to you, sir. Good evening and namaskar. Honorable Vice Chancellor of Netaji Swas State Open University, Kolkata, Professor Inarjit Lahiri, Today's chief guest and our mentor, we can say the director of the SEMCA, Dr. B. Sadraj, Professor Anirvan Ghosji, Professor Ritul Mathur Mitra, my colleague, Professor Jitendra Pandey, Professor Astos Bhatt, esteemed resource persons of various sessions, their colleagues, and distinguished participants from various places, academics and administrative staffs of NSOU and UOU. I am truly pleased to welcome each one of you to this one-week national level online faculty development program on strategy for developing outcome-based curriculum and utilizing digital tools in education organized by Netaji Subhas Open University in collaboration with our Uttarakhand Open University, Bhagwan. Friends, as we begin this journey, we aim to learn new ways of teaching and designing courses that meet the expectation of learners according to modern educational needs and in accordance with the National Education Policy 2020. Education scenario is changing fast, and as teacher, we must adapt and adopt use new tools to ensure that our students or learners receive the best possible learning experience. This faculty development program is an excellent opportunity for teachers, researchers, experts, academicians and administrators to explore these new emerging technologies and 
the AI techniques together. Throughout this week, we will be able to hear from the distinguished experts and research persons who will guide us in areas such as setting clear learning goals, assess, assessing student progress, and using viable digital tools that can make our teaching more effective, interactive, and engaging. I found that each session is planned carefully to give us practical skills and knowledge, helping us to create lessons that are more effective and relevant to today's, to today's students. I encourage all the participants to make the most of this opportunity by actively engaging in each session and applying these insights to your own teaching and learning pedagogies. Let us use this time to exchange ideas and learn from one another. I would like, like to thank Netaji Sawas Open University and our dedicated team of Uttarakhand Open University for organizing this important event. Let us work together to make this work meaningful and inspiring. I hope this faculty development program will also set up new goals and insights among the participants and accordingly new ideas will come up during the interaction for the upkeep of open and distance learning through new emerging ICT enabled technology for skilling and upskilling of the learners. I wish this event will have the grand success to set up new milestones for blended learning goals to bridging up the gap between the face-to-face -face and distant learning online learners. With these words, once again, I appreciate the efforts made jointly by the organizers of the NSOU and UOU. I am also thankful to Dr. B. Sadraj, Director Simka, for his constant encouragement to Odell fraternity. And I am also thankful to Professor Indrajit Lahiri, Vice Chancellor of the NSOU, for collaborating this FD program with the Uttarakhand Open University. I wish everyone a fruitful and enjoyable week of learning. Thank you very much and best wishes to you all. Jai Hind. Over to Professor Mitra. Thank you so much, sir. Indeed, grateful for your encouraging lecture. Uh, I would now like to uh, ask my co-coordinator, uh, Dr. Ashutosh Kumar Bhatt, uh, Associate Professor of Computer Science, Uttarakhand Open University, to propose the vote of thanks. Over to you, Dr. Bhatt. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good evening, everyone. Honorable Vice Chancellor, Uttarakhand Open University, Professor OPS Negi, sir. Honorable Vice Chancellor, NSOU, Professor Indrajit Lahiri, sir. Dr. B. Sadrat, Director Simka, respected dignitaries, faculty member, and esteemed participant. It is my proud privilege to propose this vote of thanks on the auspicious occasion of the inaugural function of one week national level online FDP on strategy for developing outcome-based curriculum and utilizing digital tool in education. I take this opportunity to express our deepest gratitude and sincere thank to Honorable Vice Chancellor Uttarakhand Open University, Professor OPS Negi sir, Honorable Vice Chancellor Netaji Subhas Open University, Professor Indrajit Lahiri sir for their extreme presence and valuable thoughts shared on this occasion. Sir, it is truly an honor and pleasure for us to have you with us today. Thank you both for gracing the occasion and for your encouraging word of guidance. Sir, your word have set a benchmark for us and will certainly guide us in the new direction. On behalf of entire UOU and NSOU faculty and staff, we extend our heartful thank to you, sir. We are also immensely 
full to Dr. B. Sadra, Director Simka, for his insightful lecture. Once again, thank you for your gracious presence in today's inaugural session of FDT, FDP. I a heartful thank goes to Professor Jitin Pandey of Uttarakhand Open University and Professor Anirban Ghosh of Netaji Subhas Open University for taking a, the initiative to organize this FDP. Our thank to Professor Ritu Matur Mitra from NSOU Coordinator FDP taking, for taking so much pain for managing the FDP since beginning. I would also like to express our sincere appreciation to delegates who have joined in this uh, inaugural function. We are fortunate to have the support and highly support of a highly motivated and dedicated team of faculty members from both UOU and NSOU. My thank goes to all faculty members from both universities for their invaluable assistance. I extend my gratitude to the director and department head who have graced this occasion with their presence. Lastly, I would like to thank all participants for their commitment to making this FDP a success. Without you, your involvement, organizing such a great event would not have been possible. My sincere thank goes to the entire organizing committee as well as the academic and non-academic staff who have coordinated the entire FDP. Thank you everyone and have a wonderful evening. Thank you once again. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Bhatt. So with this, we come to the end of the inaugural session of the Faculty Development Program. Uh, once again, it, I would like to thank everyone from the bottom of my heart. Uh, we have also finished on time. That is important. And um, so the next session, which is the uh, the first session of day one, uh, we have uh, Professor P.K. Mishra. Uh, he will be starting his uh, session uh, in, in five minutes time uh, at seven o'clock. Uh, so... Professor Mathur, uh, special thanks to our dignitaries because... Beyond the working hours and in spite of their busy schedule, they have joined and addressed to our participants. That's a great achievement also in the inaugural session. So special thanks to our both the vice chancellors. Professor Negi is still in his office and our vice chancellor traveled a lot, uh, a, a distant, because he stayed, stays at a distant places. So uh, Professor Sardat is in Delhi. Beyond working hours, they have joined. So special thanks to our dignitary sir. Uh, I hope in future the similar cooperation will be received from your end. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank very you, much. Professor Bose. Thank you, Professor Thank you, Sadraj. Sir. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank. You. So we will start uh, at seven o'clock our first online class to be delivered by Pradeep, Professor Pradeep Kumar Mishra. He is right now in US uh, on, on a Fulbright scholarship. So I think he will be joining soon from US. Isn't it, Professor Mathur? Uh, yes, uh, that's what he had actually said that he would be joining the inaugural session also. Uh, so uh, Dr. Bhatt, uh, can you please see, has he joined? Uh, okay. Dr. P.K. Mishra. Pradeep Kumar Mishra. Uh, local time uh, is I US think, is 8 30. He has not joined, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because. I think my sister has joined. Ghosh. Ma'am, yes. he has not joined. Okay. Um, Oh, okay, okay, good okay, join, sir. <laughs> yes, sir, yes. Okay, good evening. Yeah, it is coming. evening. Good, yeah, it is good, evening, sir. Good evening, sir. <laughs> good evening, sir. Good evening. Or is good it good morning, morning for you, sir? <laughs> good morning. <laughs>
घोष साहब कैसे हैं बढ़िया फाइन फाइन सर फाइन हाउ इज द वेदर देर गुड रेस्पॉन्सरी Around sixty participants are there. <laughs> It is our beyond imagination. नी इतनी बढ़िया टीम है आपकी है बिल्कुल मैं मैं तो इतना participant तो मिलने ही मिलने ही है. We are very happy to get this response from the participants, and we are trying to deliver the quality service, quality uh, content, and our uh, resource pool is also very good, like you. Okay. <laughs> You have readily accepted our uh, invitation. Ah, जब मैंने accept किया तो मुझे था कि साढ़े नौ होगा अभी एक घंटे का क्योंकि यहाँ पे शाम के समय time adjust कर देते हैं winter में. अच्छा. So now the difference is ten hours thirty minutes. Ten hours thirty. पहले nine hours thirty minutes था तो मुझे था कि साढ़े नौ रहेगा तो I will deliver a lecture. But it's okay, no issue. Okay. <laughs> We are good. Thank you so much, sir. So kind of. You. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. So, sir, will you share the PPT or on your own you will share? Ah, uh, I will share. Okay. Share. Later, I will okay. provide a copy. No okay. need to worry. Okay. Ah, uh, 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 control. Okay, I will share. Okay, co-host. 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 One week, sir. One week. One week. Okay. Yes. Wonderful. The course has been designed in such a way that the teachers who will complete this course can claim the credit from uh, under their career advancement scheme. So that's mm -hmm. why it has been made for one week. Okay. Or short term course for... under the category of would... short term course. Yes. Okay. Distance open के लिए ये या any any teacher any anyone can join okay. anyone can join okay. and. Okay. Yeah, as per UGC norms, there is a provision for STC short term course. Okay. If the university of the respective participants accept this uh, certificate, they can claim the uh, credit under career okay. advancement scheme. Uh, Professor Mathur, you, you must start. Yeah, Sharad has joined. Ha ha. Sharad has already joined. It has. So, it is seven. Right. Also seven or. Ha. Yes. You must start. फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम एंड इट इज अनर दैट वी हैव प्रोफेसर पी के मिश्रा विद हिस्स टॉपिक ऑफ डिस्कशन विल बी डेफिनेशन सिग्निफिकेंस philosophy of obe and obe vision and mission statements of institution uh, but before that i would just like to introduce professor uh, mishra though he needs no introduction uh, professor pk mishra is director center for policy research in higher education uh, national institute of education and planning and administration that is nepa in new delhi His research specializations are teacher education, educational technology, and higher education. He has received several prestigious international research scholarships that include the Fulbright Nehru Academic and Professional Excellence Fellowship of United States India Education Foundation, the Commonwealth Academic Fellowship of CSC UK, Doctoral and Senior Researchers Scholarship of. of daad germany erasmus mundus visiting scholar uh, scholarship of european commission national scholarship of slovak republic mashof scholarship of israel government and research exchange scholarship of fmsh france he has been a member of the academic bodies of several institutions and organizations He has visited many countries for different educational purposes, published widely, nationally, and internationally, 
and completed research and development projects and developed educational media programs. His recent books, Teaching uh, Competencies for 21st Century Teachers, Practical Approaches to Learning, and Learning and Teaching for Teachers, uh, it has impacted uh, teachers and teaching practices globally. And I would request the participants to also have a look uh, at these books, uh, which uh, the link of which will be uploading uh, or it has already been uploaded in the LMS. So over to Professor Mishra. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much for having uh, with us. So our uh, friends are very Good evening to all of you. Although I'm in USA, so from my side, it's so very good morning. It's of course very good morning and evening both. Uh, first of all, grateful to Professor Anir Van Ghosh and uh, Professor Mathur for giving me this opportunity. Because whenever I'm I am participating in, in any such program, basically I am learning a lot. So today will be going to be my learning day, and I'm going to learn from all of you, <clears throat> uh, friends. Wonderful, and we also welcome and will we join the team to welcome you to because you are part of this program. And I always say that whenever we are joining any program, the purpose is not to join the program. The purpose is to learn something, learn something for our development. You are not learning for Professor Ghosh. You are not learning for Professor Mathur. You are not learning for anyone else. Please, please remember you are always learning for yourself. So when the purpose is learning, then we see things from a different perspective. When the purpose is only to participate and to acquire a certificate, the purpose is something different. So I hope you all are CCHEN's colleagues and very experienced colleagues, and you are participating in this program. So ultimately, we are here to learn from each other, to share our stories, to ask questions, to make comments. So I, I invite you, don't be a mute spectator. Don't think that in online class, we are going to listen all the time and only a speaker is speaking and we have to listen and at the end say thank you. This was a wonderful lecture. No, uh, my humble request to all of you is if possible, uh, you can keep your cameras on if possible for you. Although I know you are sitting in your home and sometimes it is not possible. If this is this no issue. And the second is feel free to ask questions. Feel free to make comments. Feel free to share stories. This is not that I have been invited and I have all the authority to, to talk all the time. No. The best learning is where a speaker is speaking less and participants are speaking a lot. So feel free to ask questions. I will also ask questions, but you have you have to also ask questions. So uh, I will try to make this session interactive where we are talking to each other, asking questions, listening to each other. And of course, we are, we all are learning. As I said, I am also going to learn and you are also going to learn. So uh, friend, uh, we will start uh, and I have a presentation. Don't worry, I will share a copy of it. So no need to take pictures or something like that. The, the full presentation is of yours. This The one protocol that we have to follow that when we are in online learning, we have to be very careful if you are speaking, please uh, speak. But when you are not speaking, be careful that your mic is on mute mode. This is the only protocol I can say. We have to follow in online learning, otherwise it's perfectly fine. So give me a minute to share my presentation. Uh, and can I speak sometime in Hindi and sometime in English or are both sub, uh, I go in English only? Yes, yes. Uh, as you like, sir. And th English, okay, okay. Yeah. So, uh -huh. yeah. And, and uh, this is to participants also. Please feel free to share. Sometimes we are we are having a wonderful idea, but we are not sharing okay. I'm not comfortable. So the language, I, I know yeah. only two languages. So if you are comfortable in Hindi, share your thoughts in Hindi. Comfortable in English, share your thoughts in English. Don't don't let language become a barrier yes. for not expressing your thoughts. Okay. So give me a minute to share my presentation. Uh, just a minute. Okay. So, uh, friends, uh, I am starting with a question, a very wonderful, simple question and nothing specific about it. The question is like that. So, you are you are building a beautiful home for yourself and uh, you plan to make a study room for yourself in your home. So, you are building a house and you a study room. So, my question is, 
what design facilities will you choose for your study room? This is question one. And the second question in on what basis will you decide on the design and facilities? So two questions related to this. You are, you are building a home and you are making a study room. And you are asking, I am asking you, aap kis tarah ka study room banayenge? Kis tarah ki facility rakhenge? And what basis you will decide the design and facilities? So this is a question you can type in the chat box, but I will be very happy to hear some of you. And then we will move. If you will speak, I, it will be wonderful. So please feel free to speak. Unmute yourself and speak and mute. <clears throat> anybody can take a lead. Anybody, anybody. No hesitation. We are in a group of wonderful colleagues. Ji uh, Chakravarti, Professor Chak Kostov Chakravarti Ji, please. Sir, uh, good evening, sir. Good evening, good First evening. Firstly, like for to answer your first question, what design or facilities will you choose for your study room? What I would prefer is that since I am a computer teacher, so uh -huh. I would so I would prefer to have all the basic necessities that should be present in my room, which will include a proper study shelf that will have the books and necessary study materials. So whenever I want, I can access it followed by a proper study place uh, so that I can install one proper computer over there and I can do my research and study for my uh, purposes. And uh, on what basis will you decide the design facilities? Obviously, because study room is a very, very meditative place for each and every teaching professionals. So obviously, my first basis should be, it should be a completely isolated so that it is away from the crowd so that we can completely focus on our study process and lesson planning and other things. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, anyone else? One one more, one or two colleague more, and then we will move. Yeah. Anyone else? Kostubji explained very nicely. <clears throat> Don't sir, be shy. Don't be shy. Sir, one point I can add. One yes, point. Okay. Uh, sir, natural light must be come in the natural room. Light. Sir. Okay. Natural light must come in the room. It's my Perfect. last criteria. Okay. Anyone, any quick comment? More? Uh, one point uh, I added that uh, Wi-Fi facility. Uh... Wi-Fi facility. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No issue. Wonderful. So I wish all of you are going to make a very wonderful study room. Okay, let's move to another question. Uh, you have been assigned to develop a content and a teacher course. We all are teaching different courses and you, you have been assigned to develop content as well as teacher course, two credits. And the title of the course is Distance Education in Digital Ace. So this is a topic anybody can, can teach or anybody can develop a content. So my question is, two questions again. First, what will be your measure to decide the content? Of course, this is a two-credit course, so you have to decide content accordingly. But what else you will keep in mind while deciding the content? Then the second thing is, how will you decide your strategies to teach? So your first measure, your first task will be to deciding the content. And then the second task will be how you are going to teach. So how you will take decision regarding both? Deciding the content and deciding how to teach. Feel free, feel free to answer. I sir, am in company of wonderful colleagues. Yeah. For selecting content, naturally yeah. we uh, must follow the syllabus, and then after the day-to-day -day life relationship with that syllabus, we want to. No, but Sudarshanji, when, when we are developing the content, so, so we are making syllabus. No one else is giving us syllabus. We are deciding the syllabus. Okay, sir. Uh -huh. But it's okay. Usually we do though, the, we follow the syllabus. But suppose we have to develop a syllabus. Then then how we will develop a syllabus? Sir, may I? Okay. Yeah, Kost uh, who? Kostovji? Kost yes. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Sir, so no matter like whichever discipline it is, when we develop a syllabus, 
we obviously should have an expectation of activating prior knowledge what the student should be knowing earlier. What are the proactive knowledge that the student should be carried? Accordingly, we will design our syllabus to ensure that the learning process should not be stagnant. It should progress forward. That should be the first priority of the syllabus, setting up a syllabus. And then in the strategies part, obviously every learning uh, process is different according to the potential of a student. So we should ensure that our, our teaching methods or the strategies should be flexible enough with multiple activities and the relevance to the multidisciplinary concepts where the people can relate themselves easily without having much of the conflicts of similar contents or ideas. Okay, so wonderful, good. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Sir, I also add a one point. Uh, I will decide uh, the strategy of teach uh, on the basis of the capability of student. And then I decide the strategy of teach. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? Friends, feel free to speak. Feel, because this is our day-to-day -day business. We are developing syllabus. We are we are teaching. Whether we are in in face-to-face -face mode or open, it's, it doesn't matter. This is part and parcel of our professional life. Anyone? 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 Please feel free to take a lead. We we got two wonderful answers from two colleagues, Kostobji and Chandra Dasji. <clears throat> Okay, so no one is coming forward. All are in, in a mood to listen. It's okay. <clears throat> uh, there, so, uh, uh, there are some answers in the uh, chat box. Sir. In the chat box. Okay, now people are feeling more comfortable to write in the chat box. Okay, let me have a quick look. What is in the chat box? And then we will move. Ah, okay. Okay, okay, useful. Can't tell the level of the student. Is, okay, fine. Fine. Uh, thank you. So, so please, this is not for answer. Basically, you have to reflect what we do. It doesn't matter whether we are taking any action in our personal life or in our professional life. Most of the time, exceptions apart. Our decisions usually are guided by. This is not the case all the time, but most of the time this is the case. Usually our decisions are guided by what do others do. Dusre ne apna study room kaisa banaya hai, mein bhi waisa hi banata hoon. I, I say this is not exceptions are, but most of the time, our decisions are influenced by these things and you have all the right to argument to contradict this. What do others do? What do others suggest? Muse, I have to I have to make a course make a course on digital education in uh, distance education in digital education digital is Professor Ghosh is a, is a wonderful colleague. I will ask him ki hum syllabus mein kya rakhe. I will ask Professor Mathur what can be put in the syllabus. So what do others suggest? What do we think? Sometimes it's okay. So, so we are thinking, okay, in a study room, we need proper light. Fine. So what is our thinking? Sometimes we also say, what do we have in kitty? If we are having a lot of content, I will put everything into it. If, if, if the topic is new, the course title is new or something is new, I, if I have something less, I will put less. Jada hoga to jada rakh denge, kam hoga to kam rakh denge. If I have a wonderful a lot of money with me, I will make a bigger study room. If I have less money, I will make a small study room. Usually, usually we do this in whether it is our life or it is our profession. What do others do? What do others suggest? What do we think? What do we have in Kitty? Chanda da sab, aisa hi karte na ya kuch? Our decisions are influenced by this. Uh, 
Are you are you are mute? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's just think. Isn't it more practical and logical to think and decide what we want to achieve and take actions accordingly? For what purpose I am building a study room? How much how much time I will spend in that study room? For what purpose I am I am I am bringing a course distance education in digital age. मैं ये काम क्यों कर रहा हूँ? What is the basic need behind doing this work? What I would like to achieve after completing this task? Mm -hmm. What I would like to achieve through my course? The moment I decide this first, our whole actions come or go in a different way rather than we are just deciding on what others are saying. Usually in our education system, we mostly we work on the other way. What others are saying, what others are doing, what others are prescribing. So suppose I have to make a syllabus, I will usually go and see what other universities are offering. And then more or less we will copy that. But isn't it good to ask why this university, why my university is offering this course? Why I am making a study room? Maybe someone spending six to seven hours in study rooms, that requirement will be different. And if you're simply spending one hour in your study room, your requirement will be totally different. So usually we are taking better decision. We are, we are going in the right way. We are more effective, we are more efficient when we are thinking what we would like to achieve and then plan accordingly. But usually, and there is no regret saying, usually our education system is guided by that we go on the advice of others and we go on, on thinking of our thinking rather than we are actually asking this question what we would like to achieve. And when we will start this question what we would like to achieve, then the whole scenario is a totally different scenario. So I want to say that we have to ask what we want to achieve and then we have to plan accordingly. And in simple terms, when we are doing this, actually, in one word, this is outcome-based education. This is outcome-based education. I will explain this in, in, in detail. But in outcome-based outcome education, we are deciding first. We are giving enough attention and time to decide what we are going to achieve, why we are doing this task, what we are interested to get at the end of this process. When we are asking these questions first and proceeding accordingly, then we can say we are practicing outcome-based education. When we are not asking these questions at the beginning and simply going, then we cannot say this is outcome-based education. Nimai sir, it's okay? It's making sense? Uh, yes, sir. I can see Nimai ji. I, I cannot see other. Uh, maybe I can ask Kostov ji also. Kostov ji, is it making sense? Kostov Chakravarti ji? Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's, more, it's making sense. Usually, usually we are doing this way or other way. So the other way. Other, okay, other way. So when we are doing this way, or आपको एक काम की बात बताऊँ अगर हम इस तरीके से देखते तो our life also become easier because the usually we follow others. वो दूसरे ऐसा कर रहे हैं तो हमको भी ऐसा करना है. But Why? do we really need to do this? If we are asking oh. this question, it doesn't mean. So what I was saying, usually we go, okay, this university is offering a wonderful course. We have to allow, also offer. Are we asking with that we really need this course in our university? And it, maybe we are offering the same course, but whether our intent is same, whether we are interested to achieve similar thing that another university is attempting to. So when we are asking questions first, 
and then proceeding accordingly, then more or less we are in the zone of outcome-based education. So friends, uh, we are going to learn a bit about outcome-based education. And of course, at the end, we have some time to do a simple exercise. So let's and feel free to ask questions. Feel free to ask questions. I will keep asking, but also feel free to. Uh, so I because the term is outcome-based education. So outcome is but obvious. At the end, what we are getting is outcome. But the question is, what is education? You can you can say, Are, we are teachers from such a long time, and this is this term we know very well. The problem with education is there is no universal definition of education. There are thousands of definitions of education. But when we are discussing outcome-based education, we have to, to make a perspective. We have to make an operational definition of education. Then it will be easy for us to understand what education is and then what outcome-based education is. So anybody interested to explain what is education according to you, not according to X, Y, Z, but according to you, what is education? Feel free to share. <clears throat> your thoughts and and i already said there is no universal definition of education so you cannot say i cannot say no 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 your definition is right or wrong every definition of education is the right definition because there are thousands of definitions well, what is your definition of education <clears throat> anybody anybody can come forward and share of course you can write in the chat box but you can also Speak. So the communication of ideas mm -hmm. uh, from one person to another, the communication of ideas uh, that constitutes so, education. Okay. So uh, there, there is one definition I am bringing before you. Uh, this, is a, this is a definition and basically this is a definition from a dictionary. So uh, this definition is the act that there are, I already said there are several definitions, but we will take two definitions I'm going to share into account to, to continue our discussion. The first is the act or process are importing or acquiring general knowledge. So act or process of importing or acquiring, these two words are very important. When we say importing, then we are relying on someone else. When, when we are saying acquiring, then we are doing it own. So this definition clubs both, imparting or acquiring. So we are taking help of others for our education and we are relying on ourselves. Like distance education, more on acquiring. Face-to-face -face more, more on imparting. So imparting or acquiring general knowledge. So look, what are the components of education? General knowledge, developing the powers of reasoning and judgment, and generally are preparing oneself or others intellectually for mature life. So it includes knowledge, powers of reasoning, powers of judgment. And of course, what is the ultimate purpose of education? Any education, any type of education is preparing oneself or others. So when we are doing it for ourselves, we are preparing ourselves. And when we are doing it for others, we are helping others. What intellectually for mature life? This is a, a term you can explain it in very, very many ways. Uh, let's uh, go to another definition. I like this. Uh, this is not, I am not saying that this is ultimate definition or a perfect definition. There cannot be no ultimate or perfect definition of education, but I like this. Let's see what this definition says. Education is the deliberate, systematic, and sustained. And this definition is, is, is very useful for us educators. These three terms, deliberate. This is not that education is accidental. Education is always a deliberate act, a systematic act, and sustained. Three terms, always, always keep in mind. The moment we are talking about education, we have to think that this is a deliberate activity, this is a systematic activity, and this is a sustained. We, we have to make it continuous. Effort to transmit, provoke, or acquire. 
three terms, three terms, transmit, a teacher is helping, a parent is helping, a colleague is helping, a provoke, pro sometimes teachers also provoke, sometimes parents also provoke, and sometimes I am, I am motivated enough to acquire. So transmit, provoke, or acquire, knowledge, values, attitudes, skills, sensibilities, as well as any learning that results from the effort. So when we talk about education, we are not simply learning something or memorizing something and writing and, and at the end of examination. This is not education. We, we, we see education in a very narrow sense. I have no hesitation to say because I study higher education and I am also a teacher educator. So I know this, how we see this term and how we practice this term. With no regret, we practice education in a very narrow sense. But no, education is much more. Education is basically a life-changing activity. So it consists knowledge, it consists values, attitudes, skills, sensibilities, as well as the journey doesn't stop here, as well as learning that results from the effort. So when we have to talk about education, when we think, okay, look, this education is given to bring this, then we have to think about these terms. So maybe sometimes we are helping one to get education, we are helping on the knowledge front, but sometimes maybe else, sometimes else, we are helping that person the value front, attitude one, skills, sensibilities. So this is education. So look, education is as a tool that is helping us to acquire all these and many more. So as educator, we have to be very careful whenever we are imparting any education, the outcome must be these or something else. But there needs to be an outcome at the end. So let's move. What is outcome-based education? So, so far, we have discussed two things. First, we are making good decision when we are thinking first what we would like to achieve at the end. And the second, Education help us to acquire knowledge, skills, abilities, attitude, sensibilities, and so on. So these two things are, if these two things are clear, then we are ready to discuss more about outcome-based education. So as evident from the name, education, that is outcome-based. Although I always argue, I, I take a lot of sessions on outcome-based education, but I always argue, if we practice education in a true sense. There is no need to put anything before or after. Sometimes we say value education, peace education, environment education, outcome-based education. There are so many terms attached to. Meren Najariya say education ke saath koi term attach karne ki zarurat nahi hai. There is no need to attach any term. Because if we are taking education in a right sense, all these things are part of it. But nowadays we, we attach so many terms. So my basic argument is if we are getting education in a right sense, outcome is, is, is must. But in, anyway, we will focus more on outcome-based education. What do you mean by outcome-based education? Before I explain, anyone else, anyone in from the group interested to to share what do you think about outcome-based education? Of course, this is not your first time that you are listening this term or hearing this term or, or, or expressing this term. So what is your definition of, what is your thinking about outcome-based education? Anyone interested to share? Sir, may I answer? Ji Kostoji, yes, please. <clears throat> Sir, any knowledge that develops the skill of uh, reasoning, judging, and be decisive. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is that. This is one way. Yes. Anyone else? Anyone? Anyone? Okay. Feel free, feel free, like Kostopji is, is, is answering. You can also answer. And don't think that my answer is right or wrong. No. This is basically, these are not exact answers. These are your perspective. This is your thinking. And as educator, 
we have to develop based on our perspective and thinking. Okay. So, uh, outcome based education. What is outcome based education? Because this is a terminology and more after national education policy 2020. But this is not a new term. This is not a new term. Don't think that this is a new arrival and we are practicing it. Very simple. OBE is a system of education giving priority to ends, purposes, accomplishment, and results. What after that? Why I am doing this? You are a teacher and you are, you are a computer, you are a computer professional and you are teaching. You are teaching programming to your learner. So of course it is but natural at the end of your programming course, a learner will be able to do proper programming in a right way. Aap usko web page kaise banate. So at the end, of course, that learner will be able to develop a wonderful web page. But if that learner is not able to develop a wonderful web page, then, it, then there is no meaning of that learning. Like in, Abhi, in, in our education system, sometimes we witness that we are, we are just going through without thinking or caring for. So a computer programmer is just writing a manuscript and then and, and we are assigning mass and that is okay. No. What we are getting at the end, what purpose education is, what are our accomplishments at the end, what results we are. So when we are focusing more on this, then we in, in one sense or other, we can say we are in line with outcome-based education. We are practicing outcome-based education. So priorities on ends, purposes, accomplishments, and results. Uh, then there is another take. In our traditional practices are accumulation of credit. We, we don't focus much on what we are learning rather than accumulating credit. Sometimes in online courses, I say that our main focus is to acquire certificate, not to learn the same with outcome-based education. So credit accumulation, but here the focus is on what we are going to learn, how this course is going to help us to do something, to do something meaningful, whether this course is bringing a change in us. When we are focusing this, this is outcome-based education. Uh, OBE is believed to be a better measurement of the student's success. The reason is that in, 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 in our system, we are focusing, we are, we are focusing on education, but we exactly don't know at the end whether our learners have achieved by answering four or five questions. We cannot say with certainty that our learners achieved what we intend to learn, what they intend to learn. So, when we are measuring this, whether they are able to achieve the objective that was set before at the beginning of the program of the course, then and at the end we are seeing whether these achievements, with whether these outcomes have been achieved or not, then this is outcome-based education. Uh, then OBE implementation. So as educational institutions, as educators, we have to implement OBE in our institutions. And if we have to implement OBE, then we have to make changes. We have to re make restructuring. So this restructuring is required at the level of educational programs, at the level of course curriculum, at the level of assessment, and at the level of reporting system. Be very careful. Every institution is help is providing education. But if we intend to tag this education in the in, 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 in the terminology of outcome-based education, then we have to make changes or restructuring in our programs, courses, curriculum, assessment, and reporting system. I will discuss this a bit later. What does it mean? A simple question before you is because these are the terminologies we are using and outcome is education is connected with all of these three terminologies I am bringing before you, a program, a course, and a paper. Because sometimes when we are talking about outcome-based education, these terminologies are part and parcel of our discourse. 
So a program, a course, a paper. So what, what is the difference between these terms? Because we use these terms a lot. Anyone with a quick answer, a program, a course, and a paper? Anyone interested to differentiate between these three? Okay. Uh, 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 pro yeah. Uh, course is the very fast and the paper is the uh, narrow point of view. Okay. <clears throat> so, so uh, friend, okay. So, Basically, we use these terms and sometimes we are a bit confused. So for your clarity, because when we talk about outcome-based education, outcome-based education at the level of program, outcome-based education at the level of course. So program, suppose Master of Arts in History is a program. And this first semester of Master of Arts in History, we are teaching four courses. Earlier, we were talking that we are teaching four, pap we are, we are teaching four papers. So the new terminology is the, 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 the globally recognized terminology is not paper, but course. But in our system, paper, we were, we were using a lot of papers. So when we were a student, we were using paper. So pehle semester mein, the first year, I have to clear four papers. Ghoj sahab ne bhi aisa hi kiya Pehle semester mein, pehle saal mein char paper karna. Dousre saal mein char paper karna. So one, the course and paper, same. But program course, never same. When I say you have to teach a course of two credit. It's not a program. Course is part of a program. So may, there is a program and in, under this program, there are 16 courses or 16 papers. So when we talk about outcome-based education, we have to think about outcome-based education at the, at the level of the program and at the level of the course. And usually we teachers are not teaching a program, we are teaching a course. So we are teaching a course. That's why when, when suppose I am here and I, every teacher I'm meeting, the teacher is saying, in this semester, I'm teaching three courses. So three courses means the three papers that person is teaching. And, and uh, these teachers are very proud of these courses. Oh, I am teaching because they design, develop, they decide everything about that course. The difference in, in our system, mostly someone else is deciding and we have to just follow. But the right system is where a teacher is responsible for art from syllabus to assessment. So they feel very proud in this semester, I'm offering this course, a two credit course, four credit course. It means that teacher is taking all the responsibilities related to that course. Okay, so a program, a course, a paper. So usually, please keep in mind, we teach courses, we don't teach program. These courses are part of program. Okay, so level of outcomes. Why I was discussing this? There are course learning outcomes. These outcomes are related to course. What our learners are going to achieve when this, when they are completing this course, distance education in digital is what they are going to achieve when this course is complete. So the one type of outcomes we decide, we design course learning outcomes. The second type of Outcomes we decide, uh, design program outcomes. So there is a program and that program is having 16 courses. Every course is having outcome. But in combined, what these courses, a kind of pyramid, what this program outcome after doing Master of Arts in History, what a learner will be able to achieve. And when you see from these two perspectives, then you will realize we don't have any clarity what we are going to achieve. Aap jis subject ke bhi teacher ho, aap ja ke dekhe ke aapke program outcome kya likhe ho. In everywhere program outcomes are written, but are these outcomes are really making sense? This is a question to ponder. So all course outcomes are helping to come with program, to gel with program outcomes. So as teachers, we have more say on course learning outcomes, but less say on program outcomes because program outcomes is mainly decided by a broader body or something like that. But you have all liberty to decide course learning outcomes. 
then the third type of outcomes, very important. We don't pay attention to this, but we always pay attention. College-wide outcomes are institution-wide outcomes. So suppose you say, okay, look, I am product of this. I am product of this. So, okay, you are product of this Netaji Subhas Open University. So you are supposed to, to possess all these. So college-wide outcomes. So some, some institutions are very proud of. If, if you are alumnus of our institution, you have to have these qualities. You have to have these abilities. So institution-wide outcomes and college-wide outcomes. And then fourth type of outcomes, professional outcomes. So if you are a distance educator, you are supposed to possess these and these qualities and abilities. And friends, all these go in a sink. This is not that course learning outcome is something different and professional outcome is something different. So as educators, as teachers, as faculty members, our responsibility is to please sync all these, but be very focused and careful about course learning outcome because course learning outcomes are always on the pyramid, at the base. If course learning outcomes are taken care of, program outcomes, college-wide outcomes, and professional outcomes will certainly fall in place. But if you are not taking care of course learning outcome and you are simply teaching a course by thinking my job is to teach and nothing else, then we cannot say we are practicing outcome based. I hope this is making sense to you. <clears throat> uh, if you have any question or quick comment, please feel free to ask. <clears throat> so these are level out level of outcomes with a gentle reminder. Please pay attention to the course you are teaching. Be very careful at the end of your course what learners are actually going to achieve, what learners are actually going to learn. And then, of course, you can contribute to program outcomes and college-wide and professional, but be careful about course learning outcomes. Then there are another three terms that are very relevant and uh, when we talk about outcome-based education, these are aims, objectives, and outcomes. We are talking about outcomes, but there are two other terms. And sometimes we get confused. What do you mean by aims? What do you mean by objectives? And what do you mean by outcomes? So any quick answer? These three terms, aims, objectives, outcomes. Anyone interested to share quickly the difference between these three aims, objectives, outcomes? Okay, no issue. Three terms. And these three terms are integral to all of us. Who are in the in the in the business of teaching? Aims sometimes we also call them goals. Uh, basically, aims are goals is your wishful thinking. Wishful thinking of whom? Wishful thinking of teachers. Reflecting general intention and desired outcomes of an institution, program, or course. So Usually, aims are goal decided at the level of institution, at the level of programs, at the level of course, why we are offering this course, why this institution is offering a course. Suppose uh, I said Netaji Subhas Open University, Ajutrakhand Open University is offering a course, distance education in digital is. So what aims are goals we would like to achieve through this program? So aims are goal most, mostly at the level of institution programs or course. Then learning objectives. Nowadays, there is a lot of confusion. I met many teachers, they ask, we are not sure. Earlier, we were talking about learning objectives and now that we are talking about learning outcomes, we are confused whether this is simply a name change. No, it is not. There were always learning objectives and there were always learning outcomes. But be careful, learning objective as more on the side of a teacher learning outcomes more on the side of a learn. The first major difference, learning objectives refer to teacher's intentions for learners. What student will be taught during the course or program? Your intentions, your thinking, your say, learning objectives. And learning outcome more on the side of learner. At the end of learning, what you expect from your learners to achieve? So there is no rivalry between learning objectives and learning outcomes. No confusion. Koi confusion ki zage nahi hai. 
बट आई मेट मेनी टीचर्स वो कई बार पूछते सर पहले तो ऑब्जेक्टिव हम पढ़ते थे अभी आउटकम पढ़ते हैं अभी हमें समझ में नहीं आ रहा है कि क्या डिफरेंस है नो एज ए टीचर यू सेट लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव एंड एज ए टीचर यू सेट लर्निंग आउटकम बट लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव यू सेट फॉर योर सेल्फ एंड लर्निंग आउटकम्स यू सेट फॉर योर लर्नर्स ऑल दो यू सेट बोथ बट लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव यू सेट एंड लर्निंग आउटकम्स यू सेट फॉर योर लर्नर एंड देर इज ए कॉन्फिडेंस बिटवीन बोथ सो लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव आप क्या सोच के कोर्स पढ़ा रहे हैं और लर्निंग आउटकम आप इस कोर्स को पढ़ाने के बाद क्या अचीव करना चाहते हैं सपोज ए वेरी सिंपल एग्जाम्पल यू आर रिकमेंडिंग ए गुड बुक टू ए टू ए लर्नर सो वाई यू आर रिकमेंडिंग दिस बुक टू ए लर्नर इज लर्निंग विल फॉल इन टू द ब्रैकेट ऑफ लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव and after reading that book what you expect from a learner that will learning outcome to so, isme learning objective bhi aa gaya learning outcome bhi aa gaya as a teacher we have to be very careful we have to make learning objective we have to make learning outcome and we have to make these both in relation to aims or goals when these three are in sync then sometimes we say we we have a lot of talk we don't have we we have to improve world ranking of our institutions and something like that a very simple solution is here go saab a very simple solution if we are able to make all these three in sync in our institutions we will certainly rise in our stature no issue at all but the issue is these three are not in sync program goals are something different learning objective something different learning outcomes we don't know and we are not going anywhere so as teachers my simple advice to all of you is pay attention to both but learning objective basically you are making for yourself and learning outcomes you are making for your student ninmay sir is it okay sense ho raha hai samajh mein aayi baat ye yes sir out because uh, I, i can see you only i cannot see others so i am asking this to you <clears throat> learning uh, outcomes uh, be, uh, emphasizes the result of the student understand yes yeah and learning objective why are you teaching why you are entering in the class who learning objective and you have to be with both if you have to be a successful teacher you have to enter your classroom with both learning objectives and learning outcomes okay so let's move uh, if there is any confusion you can always come back to me ask uh, because outcome based education is more concerned with learning outcomes but please re- keep in mind learning objectives are also important learning outcomes you not cannot make learning outcomes in isolation if you don't have learning objective you will not be able to make learning outcomes so pay attention to learning objective as well what are learning outcomes basically learning outcome simple three terms a s k ask attitude skills knowledge and if a person is having three that person is going to be successful in all walks of life we can say if you are having a right attitude right skills and right knowledge perfect is a wonderful recipe for success so knowledge skill abilities that an instructor intends for a student to learn or develop whenever you are teaching when you are helping someone to learn always ask usko baad mein kya milne wala hai whether that learner is going to acquire some knowledge some skill some abilities if sir, the answer please, is yes sir please told me uh, a s k a for a t Huh, a- yes sometimes because here it's ability you can say abilities are attitude uh, s for uh s for skills and then k for knowledge okay. as k simple okay. okay so my simple recipe for to judge any program any course any session including this session as well the success of any session any program any learning is if at the end i can say look this much knowledge i have gained this skill i have gained this ability i have developed this attitude i have formed perfect you can tick the 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 event was successful but if you at the end you cannot say with certainty 
then you have to make a question mark. Whether that program was really a program, then you have to question mark. So basically, what are learning outcomes? Learning outcomes are a statement. When we are giving a statement, Main ye karne ja raha hu. at the end, I will be able to do this. My learner will be able to do this. And what type of statements learning outcomes are? Statements related to specific knowledge, a statement related to practical skills, a statement related to professional development, a statement related to attitude, a statement related to higher order thinking skills, can be anything. Like at the end, you can say in the beginning, because you are joining this one week wonderful program. So you can say, look, at the end of this program, I am going to be a more, it's a better teacher. Or, and then you can specifically say, oh, how? At the end of this program, I am going to do this. And then when you are specifying this, then you are writing a learning outcome for yourself. Uh, or what are learning outcomes? These are specific knowledge, practical areas, areas of professional development, attitude, higher order thinking skills. And these are statements. Instructors expect students to develop, learn, or master at the end of their learning. So the success of learning is at the end of learning. If we are able to demonstrate that we have achieved this, we have a good outcome, and this outcome is of good quality, we can say we, we succeeded. But if at the end we cannot say, okay, we cannot produce anything, then we cannot say we have actually learned. And look, in our education system, what we are producing in, at the end, we are producing written manuscript. But whether these written manuscripts are really helping us to know what skills, knowledge, attitude they have developed, most sometimes they are lacking on this aspect. So this is simple. So learning outcomes are a statement that we make in the beginning. And at the end, we judge, we assess whether these learning outcomes have been achieved or not. So very simple. Why we make learning outcomes? A question you can ask, anybody can ask. Why we have to focus so much on learning outcomes? Why we have to decide learning outcomes? हम तो ऐसे ही पढ़ते रहे हैं अभी क्या जरूरत है लर्निंग आउटकम पहले बनाने की इतना क्यों करना है नो दे आर दे आर आर इम्पॉर्टेंट लर्निंग आउटकम प्लीज कीप वन थिंग इन माइंड लर्निंग आउटकम्स आर हेल्पफुल फॉर टीचर्स एंड लर्निंग आउटकम्स आर इक्वली हेल्पफुल फॉर स्टूडेंट्स फर्स्ट आई विल डिस्कस हाउ लर्निंग आउटकम्स हेल्प टीचर्स Sometimes we have a we have a thinking or perspective that learning outcomes for the student no, learning outcomes are also for teachers. Teacher को भी मदद करते कैसे करते make decisions about selecting course content. Remember my second question I asked you. Digital distance education in digital age. When we will, you will ask, ये कोर्स में क्यों पढ़ाना चाहता हूँ? Your content will be different. The moment you will think what other university is offering, and I, then your your outcome will pick outcome. Then you are deciding content. There are chances of more success. And Professor Ghosh is part of many board of studies, and he he knows better how we decide content. But my simple request to all of you, decide content based on learning outcomes rather than, than your, your wisdom. So make decisions about selecting course content. When you know learning outcome, if you want to think that my distance education ka student will use digital technology, ko use kar, kar lega, so then you will put a content accordingly. But if your learning outcome something that you, you, your content will change. So first deciding in course content. Learning outcomes are also related to assessment. So suppose your learning outcome is talking about acquiring a particular skill. So then at the end, you will put some practical test to assess that skill. But if your learning outcome is related to knowledge, then maybe some written test will work. So it also helps designing assessment. So once you are clear about your learning assessment, you are happy to decide content. You and you can easily decide type of assessment. 
Sometime in our system, there is no linking between outcome and assessment. Uh, one type of assessment for all courses. I never agree with this. Puri University may sare program course ka ek hi assessment hoga. Nimai sab aisa hi hota hai. The one type of assessment will work for our no, no. Maybe one type of assessment in one course and a totally different type of assessment in different course because learning outcomes are different. So it also helps us to design assessment. It also helps us to design teaching strategies. You have to teach based on the learning outcomes you have decided. You cannot say that I at the end, you will be able to make a wonderful web page and you are teaching the theory of making web, web page making. No, you have to teach how to make a web page. So your teaching strategies are also connected to learning outcomes. And the very important thing is when you are having learning outcomes, then you measure, you assess your student more accurately. We have so much talk, so much discussion about assessment system in higher education. Why we are not able to build a good, a good assessment system? Because we have not worked on learning outcomes. Humko ye pata hi nahi hai. Frankly speaking, hum kyo padha rahe hum bas padha rahe when, when we are simply teaching, we have no idea about learning outcome, then we, we cannot fix our assessment system. Once we are fixing this learning outcome issue, then we will be able to fix assessment time. So accurately and effectively, we can assess. Then we hear report like that, out of 100 graduates, only 20% or 30% are employable. The reason is when they were in, in their classes, we were not clear what for, what for what reason they are in the classes and what we have to tell them, what we have to teach them. So they when we are put learning outcomes in place then we are also it it makes us easy it makes it easier at our part to measure a student learning accurately and effectively and how learning outcomes help a student uh, decide if the course is a good fit for their academic trajectory visit the website of some of the good universities highly ranked universities anywhere in the world आपको उनका एक कोर्स पढ़ के समझ में आएगा कि मुझे ये कोर्स करना चाहिए या नहीं करना चाहिए। Don't believe that because this uh, this open university is just visit some wonderful platforms, Coursera, to you any 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 platform. There are number of courses they are offering. By reading that course, the description of that course and the learning outcomes, you will decide, okay, this is a wonderful course for me. I have to pay so much money to do this course. The moment you are clear about learning outcomes, what I am getting at the end, you are, you are ready to take or reject. And look how, how we offer our courses and programs. Master of Arts in, but you are not clear what at the end of two years I am going to get. So once learning outcomes are written well, learning outcomes are specified, it's very easy for a student to pick a course or drop that course. Usko pata chal jata hai. Agar hum learning outcome clear kar lein apne program or courses ke, most of our problem will be gone. Uh, identify what they need to do be successful in the course. If learning outcomes are there, a student will think twice before taking a course. Oh, I have to do two practical things. I have time do so much. I have to do so much. Then I will not go. Then I will not move. Then I will not be able to earn credits. So they, they will realize, they will assess whether they are having saved the time, if energy to do that course or not. So what they need to do be successful, so the, then the choice will be more informed. So if learning outcome in place, a student will go through and realize, and then they only those students will pick the course who are able to do it in the right way. <clears throat> Take ownership of their programs. When learning outcomes are in place, then you put some of learning burden on the soldier of students. Because learning outcome, student ko pata hai ki mujhe ye seekhna hai. 
So that then they take ownership. Okay, I have done this. I have done this. I have to do this. Then they also become party of learning. Party, but usually in our systems, the onus is on teachers. Teachers are responsible for each and everything. No. When, when we put learning outcomes, clear learning outcomes, we also help a student to take ownership of their progress. And the last thing is very important thing is that is sometimes missing in our discourses. Be mindful of what they are learning. So then they are free. If, if their parents are asking, if someone is asking, what are you learning and why are you learning? Then they are able to explain it very carefully to others. Hum kya seekh rahe aur hum kyon seekh rahe and at the end, what this learning will bring to us. So learning outcomes are important for teachers. Learning outcomes are important for students. Sometimes we are thinking that learning outcomes are only helpful to a student. No, this is a wrong thinking. Of course, teachers have to design learning objectives. Teachers have to design learning outcomes. But learning outcomes, teachers support learner to achieve those, but equally helpful for both. So now I'm coming to a practical task, how to write learning outcomes. But sometimes I'm hearing teachers say, we are not writing learning outcome. Board of studies are writing learning outcomes. They are giving us learning outcomes. We have to simply teach. Please, please remove this thinking from your, I can say, hard drive. Yes, yes. Uh, okay. So, please, please remove, permit it. Yes, I agree. You are correct. There is a master's program. There is, 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 is a bachelor's program. And there is a program. So the, the outcomes for this program, you have been given this program. It's okay. Don't worry. But as a teacher, you are responsible to teach courses. And you have all the liberty and you have to exercise your freedom to rewrite the learning outcomes of the courses you are teaching. Maybe you are getting a course outcome as well, but you can revolt. You can realign, revisit those learning outcomes and teach course accordingly. This will be more helpful for your student rather than following a course with not so clear learning outcome. So exercise your power, exercise your liberty to revisit the learning outcomes of courses you are teaching. If this message is clear to you, then I have done my job successfully. If this message is not clear to you, my two hours are based. Ninmay sahab, samjhe, mein kya kya rata aapko? Yes, sir. Don't think that humko jo mil gaya wahi pad. Padhana wahi hai. I am not saying you are, you don't make any changes in syllabus. But make changes in learning outcomes. Why you are teaching this course? Then we are free. Why I am teaching, the, from which perspective I am teaching this course? Work on learning outcomes of the courses you are teaching. Be happy. Your learners will be happy. You will be happy. And at the end, your institution will be happy. Society will be happy. But if as teachers, we are not paying attention to the learning outcomes, simply accepting what it is, teaching accordingly, then we are no, not going anywhere. So out when we are talking about outcome-based education, I meet many, many teachers and they say, Sir, syllabus to investi bana deti hai. Hum kya kar sakte hai? It's right. You can do what I'm telling you. You can revisit the learning outcome of the course you are teaching. And in Indian teachers teach two, three courses, four courses in a semester. So if you are taking care of learning outcomes, two, three courses, this will be a wonderful service. So how to write learning outcomes? The most important question is, there are many ways to learn, write learning outcomes. There is no one set formula. But there is, is a popular formula named as ABCD guide. So what is this ABCD guide? Whenever we have to write or revisit learning outcomes, what we have to keep in mind? Four things. A, B, C, D. What is A? Audience. A for audience. For whom we are making these learning outcomes. What behavior we expect what condition we are putting and what degree they are getting. So audience, usually audience described to our student. So the type of students we are teaching. 
uh, in the beginning, someone was answering, I think Kostoji was answering and the answer was right. We have to take care of our learners. What type of learners we are teaching? So the type of learners we are getting in, in bachelor programs and the type of learners we are getting in our master's program, there is a difference. So our learning outcomes will also differ. So we have to keep in mind who are our audience. So maybe the audience, the student of one university are totally different from students of another university. So learning outcome decided by one university is not going to work automatically in my university. So a student, audience, then behavior, what they are going to do. And behavior in action verb, at the end of this program, at the end of this content, at the end of this topic, at the end of this semester, what they are going to do? Explain, analyze, create. So what type of behavior you are expecting? What type of knowledge, skill, attitude, ability you are expecting from your student at the end of this course? Then the third thing is condition is very important. Sometimes people are confused. What do you mean with condition? Condition is sometimes we are expecting, okay, our learner will, will deliver a 10-minute talk after going this we'll write a, 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 a we'll write an essay we'll demonstrate this so what type under which condition they are supposed to show their behavior so condition within undergrinding verbally by the end of the term and the fourth is degree degree is not that bachelor's degree and master's degree that degree is no degree is independently, fully, collaboratively, partially. So this is the degree. So sometimes we expect our learners to do task alone. But sometimes we, we expect them to do this task in collaboration with others. So this is degree. So uh, whenever we are framing learning outcomes, we have to think about these four terms, A, B, C, and D. And then we can revisit any learning outcome or we can write learning outcome as a press, it's up to you. Uh, I'm just simply showing a, a chart I've taken from a university website, uh, just to show how, how they write learning outcomes. And I am in US, so I've taken a, this a, a from a slide website of a US university. So uh, you can see here the discipline is written, here the course is written, so suppose, uh, and then sample learning goals are written and sample learning outcomes are written. So let's move to the second one, social sciences. The course name is cognitive psychology. Uh, sample learning goal is a student will understand human language acquisition. So you can see this is a broad term. It's not a specific, but next, Learning outcomes are making it very specific. That a student will be, you can see, a student will be able to identify specific stages of language acquisition. A student will be able to describe major theories of language development. A student will be able to articulate gaps within theories of human language acquisition. So you see, now it's very clear they will be able to identify specific stages of language acquisition. And there is a message for teacher as well. First, when I'm going to teach, I am going to talk about, I'm going to deliver a lecture, I'm going to recommend a resource related to stages of language acquisition. Then I will move to theories of language development. Then I will move to discuss the gaps within theory of human language acquisition. So, when learning the right type of focused, clear learning outcomes are in place, then it is quite easy for a student to proceed. And it is, it is also equally helpful for a, for a teacher to teach. But if learning outcomes are not there, jab rasta hi pata nahi hai, to phir to kaha jayenge hami nahi pata. So suppose, uh, दास आप वो लगाते हो गूगल मैप लगाते हो निमाई साहब यू यूज गूगल मैप्स यस सर यस सर सो इन गूगल मैप्स व्हाट यू डू यू पुट अ डेस्टिनेशन एंड देन क्लिक देन आई 
ओके बट एक बार गूगल मैप में आप डेस्टिनेशन नहीं करो पुट नहीं करो और फिर गूगल मैप चलाओ तो क्या होगा कोई भी नहीं रिजल्ट आएगा सो आउटकम्स आर लाइक दवर डेस्टिनेशन सो इफ डेस्टिनेशन गूगल को डेस्टिनेशन पता है हमको सही जगह ले जाएगा और गूगल को हमने डेस्टिनेशन दे नहीं दिया तो हमें भी घुमाता रहेगा कहेगा आपकी मर्जी जहां चले जाओ वही आपका जगह है आवर एजुकेशन सिस्टम इज लाइक दिस वी डोंट नो वेयर आवर डेस्टिनेशन इज वी आर जस्ट राइविंग अराउंड एंड एट द एंड वी आर कमिंग एंड सेइंग टू द घोसा घोसा वी हैव वंडरफुली कंप्लीटेड सक्सेसफुली कंप्लीटेड दिस वन वीक प्रोग्राम नो इफ लर्निंग आउटकम्स आर इन प्लेस सो देन वी विल बी डायरेक्टेड आवर लर्नर्स विल बी डायरेक्टेड एंड एट द एंड वी विल रीच टू दैट प्लेस ओके सो next move to objective uh then how to be right from where what is the basis to write learning outcomes yes, uh there are different i say different bases even in in ancient indian tradition there are a different bases to write learning outcomes but one of the most like uh, we have in ancient education system panchpadi pranali that is start from annamay kosh and goes to uh, pranamay vigyan mai anand anandamay kosh so there are panchpadi pranali that we can follow because the ultimate result is is anand uh, some mu okay i think someone's mic is open so uh, so you as a teacher you can follow that as well as there is a popular taxonomy mosa pasara where blooms taxonomy this is not that these are the only two ways as a teacher you are free to devise your taxonomy and apply that ek hi was word hai ki at the end we our learner is getting something meaningful that is going to help that learner in in later life this is this is this is okay so uh, the one way is i said panchpadi pranali in ancient education system we can work on that or we can also use bloom's taxonomy it's a very popular taxonomy so i will just give a an examples from or i will just explain bloom's taxonomy in brief and then you can follow but you can follow there are other ways to design learning outcomes we cannot discuss all those here yeah, but bloom's taxonomy is a very popular one uh and this taxonomy has been revised and i am sure most of you are familiar with this taxonomy so what is this taxonomy let's see this taxonomy uh there are five stages to this taxonomy now basically six now it is start from remember it goes to understand then apply so this is one set and the next set is analyze evaluate and create so 6 3 and 3 so usually remember is if you can say that the broad base is remember so at the end of this course or the program what your learners will be able to remember and without any hesitation i say most of our education system work on this level we are very happy if you are remembering what i what what i discussed with you or what i what type of lecture i have given and you are producing that at the end of examination we are very happy then the second is understand you can see as a bit narrow so i am remembering but i am also understanding and then the third stage is very important is apply so if you are able to do these three more or less is good but the next level is analyze why we are doing this how we are doing this evaluate how successful we are and then create and you say there is a tiny portion of create create so remember to create so there is a journey education is a journey from remember to create majority of learners at the level of remember or a few task at the level of create so at a teacher you whenever you are designing a course or you are revisiting a course you can take help of this taxonomy and you can write very clearly okay after completion of this is not that you have to move all those related to remember no it's up to you because uh, you are a teacher so you you can decide 
how much remember how much understand how how much apply in 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 my course but at the end you have to very clearly write okay after doing this they will be able to do this they will be uh, apply this they will be able to analyze this so you have to write uh, accordingly so this taxonomy is going to help you remember understand apply analyze evaluate and create the six stages uh, so you can take help of this taxonomy and this taxonomy is available but i will also share this presentation uh, so this is an exercise i am giving to you i am suggesting to you uh, you have to work on it take it seriously and share your outcomes with professor ghosh and uh, uh what is what a very simple task i am going i am giving you the task is it i am not saying that you have to write outcomes for a course i am expecting you to take a topic from the course you choose so suppose you are teaching a course don't take the whole course with you pick one topic one unit and write three student learning outcome based on that unit. And once you are able to do this, then you can write learning outcomes for a whole course. And some of you can say, this is a very small assignment, the lecture is over, the lecture is ending at 10, and I will write and submit this at by 10, 10 to Professor Ghost no. Writing student learning outcome is one of the most sincerest things that we have to do as a teachers. Writing three student learning outcomes may take three hours or more. We, you have to be very careful when you are writing learning outcomes. So this is a serious business. You don't need to be in a hurry just to write three student learning outcomes and pass it on. No. Because you are writing these learning outcomes to learn how to write learning outcomes. My, my simple advice to all of you will be to read some of the learning outcomes written by in, in good courses and then you realize how they are writing. Because learning outcomes need to be very clear. There is no ambiguity. The moment any ambiguity is there, you are not your learners are not going to achieve those. Aapka learning outcome nahi hoga, saaf sutra. So, then your end result will not be clear. And that's sometimes we say, if you are very clear what you would like to achieve in your life, you are more successful. But sometimes you are not clear, then you will roam here and there and you will not reach anywhere. So, my simple assignment that I am giving to all of you is, write three student learning outcomes related to a topic, not to a course. Once you are doing do, done this, then you can, of course, go for writing learning outcomes for your course. Uh, so, and following, the, I've given you a formula. You can take help of Bloom's taxonomy and you can follow this A, B, C, D. So, when you, are, when you are writing learning outcomes, put a condition, put audience, put behavior, and put the degree of measurement. So, a very simple task I am giving. I am saying it is a simple task, but believe me, this is not a simple task. And give attention to Take your time, discuss with colleagues, and learn how to write wonderful learning outcomes. And once you are able to write good learning outcomes, you once you are able to reflect on learning outcomes, then there are chances you will be more successful as a teacher and your learners will love you more. Of course, they love you, but they will love you more and you will serve more to the education than you are serving now. So... This is from my side, uh, and yes, my two books that uh, Ma'am was talking about, the reference is there, and these are available online, so you can acquire for your libraries, and you can get many lessons, uh, because written in very simple languages, and I've written these for teachers, so you can take help of these, and you can improve your practices, so this can be a good reading as well. So this one is Learning and Teaching for Teachers, and this is a recent one. Teaching competencies for 21st century teachers. So both for you teachers and teachers at any stage. I don't. I never differentiate between a teacher teaching at a school 
or in higher education and university. For me, a teacher is a teacher. So there are lessons for teachers working in any system, anywhere. So this is from my side. This presentation is all yours. I will, I will share a copy of this, no issue. Some of the references that I've taken. Uh, this is my email for your reference and record. In case in future you are interested to ask any questions or interested to make comments, feel free to. And I will be more than happy to answer. I, I, I don't promise that I will immediately answer, but I will certainly answer that I can say. So thank you so much. I can see there are five, six minutes with us. Feel free to ask questions, make comments. And thank you so much for giving me this opportunity to communicate with all of you and basically to learn from you. And I'm going to learn from your questions and comments. Thank you so much. So any, any, because we have four or five minutes left, mm. feel free to ask questions, anything coming to your mind, any doubt, any clarification, any argument, any disagreement, because I will be more happy with this agreement rather than agreement. So Kosto has raised mm. his hand, so Kosto may ask questions. Yeah, yeah, feel free, feel free to. <clears throat> so first of all, thank you very much for such a beautiful insight that I have been very closely observing Although I'm a school teacher, but I still find a lot of things relevant, which can be applicable in the school education as well. <clears throat> but sir, I have a question. Uh, I, I would put myself as an example over here. As you said that uh, different uh, uh, courses have the different outcome. That is why, you know, the assessment process will vary. Now, if I put forward my example as such, that my graduation has been under different university and my master's was from the different university. So as and when I started switching over, I find that the connectivity between the curriculum or the courses has a lot of gaps. So uh, is it somehow possible that the college and the universities are taking care of it when the maybe like discipline uh, discipline wise for example if it is a computer or mathematics they should have a uniform transition of the uh, programs or syllabus as such so that the student feel connected uh, over the learning process otherwise like i maybe as uh, the learning process are different between the different students so they find kind of, kind of disconnected and lose the purpose of no, no. why I, they are I got, studying. I got you. Uh, Kostoji, I got you. It's wonderful. Uh, yes, let me begin with this. Our problem is we are going for uniformity all the time in education system. And we are such a wonderful country with diverse people, background, cultures. We have to celebrate that. So when I'm talking about don't think about that your university is going to change the pattern. Let the university doing what they are doing. But as a teacher, what you are, so suppose you are making three learning outcomes for your unit. It doesn't need that at the end of you are checking those learning outcomes. You can, you as a teacher, you can simply give an assignment. You can simply ask some questions. You can simply give some exercise. So take your liberty. Don't think that the first we will uni make it system uniform and then the same type of assessment. The Our problem is that we are making, we are trying to make teaching learning uniform all across the country. This is a very wrong notion. So a person living somewhere else doing a course and a person living somewhere else doing another course, their learning outcomes can be totally different. Maybe the, the course title is same. So there are two types of assessment. The one type of assessment we call assessment of learning. That's assessment of learning is basically in the domain of institutions. But what is in the domain of teacher is assessment for learning. So if you have to really practice outcome-based education, you have to focus more on assessment for learning. That is day-to-day, -day, more teacher-driven, more, more can be conducted in classroom setting. So because the ultimate purpose is not degree or diploma or certificate what we are getting. The ultimate purpose is what learning we are coming with. So my simple recipe is, although we can have a wonderful long discussion on it, my simple recipe is follow the path of assessment for learning, make learning outcomes and try to 
to try to assess that whether your learners are able to achieve those outcomes in classroom settings. If you are doing this, fine, because the uniformity business is, is a serious one and this is, I can say, beyond our domains that I can say. Yeah. Thank you, okay, sir. Thank Kostur, you very much. Kostur, you got my point? Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. But wonderful, wonderful. Uh, you were all a wonderful company throughout the lecture. Anyone else? Anyone else? Sir, may I ask a question? Yeah, most welcome. Yes. Uh, sir, it's a wonderful uh, lecture and so helpful. Sir, I teach history in a college in Kolkata. Uh, what I personally faced that in my college, the students, they have different objectives. They have different aims. So that's why when I find it difficult to, because they uh, there is no uh, uniform idea what they want to be what they want to do what is their objective so in a class of 50 students if there are 20 or 25 different types of objective of students so then sir how do i uh, what approach should i take to address most of them or how should i address them so that it uh, help most of okay. them in one lecture in one okay class? oh i i got you no don't worry about that you, you are offering a course and you are offering a course with certain learning outcomes in mind. So don't worry that I am going to, you are not there to satisfy each and every learner. You are offering a course and then at the beginning, you are very clearly stating in your first lecture, look, this is the course. We will work on this course for four months. And at the end of this course, we, I expect all of you to demonstrate this. So let's make it clear on the very first day you are entering your classroom. And then, then learners will work according to their preferences, choices, learning styles. Let them work, but don't worry about this. But, but if you are not telling why I am teaching this course, then you have to worry. So my su simple suggestion is don't worry about what students are thinking. Worry about what you are teaching and with what intention you are teaching. And then you have to tell them that, look, at the end of four sem this semester or during this week or next week, you are expected to demonstrate this. When you are making it clear to them, then they will work. Of course, they will work in different ways. But at the end, they will be there to show you that they have learned this. So this is a very simple. Don't overburden yourself. Thank you, sir. Thank you very you much. Got, you got your answer? Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, so, here we may conclude. May I request Dr. Mathur or Dr. Bhatt to propose a vote of thanks? It has been a wonderful experience for us to hear you. Yes, thank you, sir. Thank you. Oh, uh, thank you very there. much. Yes. And uh, uh, it was very interactive session, sir. As you already uh, in the starting, you told that the participant will speak more than the resource person. So this happens in this uh, uh, lecture. And uh, thank you very much. You have enlightened about outcome-based education, how it is implemented. Uh, sir, you also differentiated uh, learning objective as well as learning outcome with uh, very small and simple example. Uh, and throughout the lecture, you have interacted with our participant. And finally, you also explained about this uh, Bloom's taxonomy. So uh, uh, it was a wonderful lecture. Uh, as you told that the outcome are like the destination like in Google map. So uh, uh, thank you once again, sir. Uh, thank you on behalf of uh, this uh, entire uh, Uttarakhand Open University family and as well as uh, Netaji Subhas Open University family. So uh, thank you once again. Thank you very much. No, thank you so much. And uh, Professor Ghosh and Professor Bhatt. So uh, 
I am very much interested to when I'm coming back, interested to organize some workshops. So yeah. feel free to organize one or two day workshop. Yes, yes. Because this is a practical activity. Yeah. And I will be very happy to help you there. So yeah. plan something and uh, teachers are coming, sitting one or two days. Yeah, yeah. And then doing it in a workshop mode. Yes, yes, sure. sure. So uh, a bit theory and then practice ah, and yes. then we are revising. Maybe, and this can be wonderful activity for all of you. Yes, Suppose sir, you are taking yes. one program. Yes. And then within these two days, you are revising the learning outcomes. So yes. and ah, this ah, learning will be. So sure. I will be very happy to uh, be part of this. So when I'm coming back, you sure, can sir. answer. That will more yes, impact. sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for this interactive session. I think... Uh, <laughs> Thank for, you, Dr. Ma'am. Thank you. Yes, yeah. for, the, uh, for the first day, uh, everyone everyone <laughs> participated and, you know, even we learned how to be a good teacher from you. That is also <laughs> important, sir. Because it was not just a lecture and question-answer, you know, session that we usually have. So, thank you very much, sir, on our thank behalf. Thank you, all of you. Uh, now, we all are contributing, but Keep contributing, keep enjoying, yeah. and be happy that we are teacher, we are educators. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you so you. much. So in future, if you are interested to organize sure. some workshop on outcome-based education, sure, I will be sure. more than happy to support. Sure. Definitely we'll organize. <laughs> in yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. yes, sir. Thank you. Thank yes. you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. From India, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Please leave them in. Uh, uh, and participants, please uh, ah. join tomorrow at yeah. 7 o'clock. Ah. Uh, and uh, in fact, join before time so that we can start a session on time. Yeah. And I have already posted in the uh, chat box uh, the modalities. How do you participate in the LMS? Uh, the credentials have been shared with you. So please log in to the LMS. There you will get the resources, the PPTs, and also quizzes. To get the completion certificate, you have to attempt all the quizzes. And at the end of the program, there will be an assessment since it is a course. So you have to clear all these quizzes and the assessment. Okay. Thank you. See you tomorrow. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay. And thank you, Professor Ghosh. Okay. For Good being night. with thank us throughout, uh, encouraging and inspiring us. Okay. Thank, you. thank you. And uh, thank you also to Professor Pandey. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Dr. Bhatt. Thank right. You. So we're closing the session. So living, yeah. Thank yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Everyone.